you do not have to deal with my raspy voice much longer. Um, remind me for an easy point what's happening on Thursday. Test, test. Great that you were the first to the point. Which means tomorrow we're doing our study guide, which you picked up on the podium on your way in. It's a pretty long one, guys. It's got 34 questions. Now, some of them are really fast. And it's got a lot of questions. So, my goal is not to say how you have homework tonight. But let's be honest, unless Hal thinks he can power through this and get it done tomorrow during class, he ought to do his first couple for homework tonight. Yes, dear. What sections are all on that? 2, 1, to 2, 4. That's a good question. You have points. 2.1 to 2.4. Okay, thank you. You took a quiz the other day on 2, 1, and 2, 2. And I don't know if you saw, I know most people did not get that great of a grade. Well, they did not do bad. But there weren't that many perfect scores. And let me explain why. Um, it's not that you didn't know what you were doing. You actually did. It was back to can you read and follow directions. So let me find a blank one. I'll show you what you want. We're not paying attention to that way. You won't make that mistake on the test because the test is going in the six percent category. Okay, so I'll remind you, it's the one that was super ugly. So some people, we had to get the white copy because the green copy was so hard to read. Um, most people miss the vocab, the top four vocab. Uh, this is me gently reminding you, it's going to be on the test. I'm actually going to let you keep your quiz today. So, but it's going to be on the test. So if you did not memorize the top little four vocab from the notes already, you want to memorize those four blanks because it was a point each. <coughs> um, most of the points from the quiz came from five, six, oh my goodness, I number the same thing, six, but it came from the middle four. And the reason it came from the middle four is you were supposed to do four different things. You were supposed to state the domain, that was one thing. State the range. Is it a function, not a function? And then the, is it on to, one to one, neither both? Most people did great at the function, not a function. Most people did great at the on to, neither or both. Most people missed that very first sentence that said state the domain and range of each relation. They didn't state the domain, they didn't state the range. They lost two points per question because of that. Now, I was nice, and since this one was so incredibly hard to read, if you didn't put the domain and range on that one, there's no way I could count off because that's just ridiculous to look at. But if Valeria had given a list, can identify the x values of the domain and the y values of the range. I mean, that's all she has to do is put d here, r here. She doesn't even have to make a whole separate list. I'm not looking for rocket science. But if the Valerian no way identified what was domain, what was range, it's hard for me to know. Most people got 8, 9, and 10 correct, and they missed number 11. Again, when you plug in 2a and you square it, it ends up being 4a squared. If I were you, there was one similar in your notes to number 11, and a lot of people missed it. So I would look back over my notes when evaluating a function. Um, Another thing a lot of people did that lost from a point, again, is not that they don't know what they're doing. They're just not following directions. So the bottom couple, I did two points each. One point, if you got it right, was it yes or no? And then the second point was your explanation. Because if it's not linear, it says the last sentence, explain if it is not linear. Explain. So if Patrick just wrote the word no, and he didn't explain why, it's hard for me to give him all his points. So he has to say no because we have y multiplied times x. Okay, as for the back of the quiz, as for the back of the quiz, most people got number 14 correct in that they said no, but their explanation was wrong. Your explanation needed to be something about the exponents because with a linear function, our exponents are only one. Most people said that number 14 didn't have a y, which kind of makes me sad. My heart breaks a little. F of X is the same thing as Y in life. They mean the same thing. So it does have a Y. The issue is those exponents. Okay, and then most people got 16, got 17, and missed 18. We had specific rules with standard form about the A. Can someone tell me what the deal was with the A? That way you can get your good point. Yes, dear. It can be a negative or a fraction. So a lot of people told me on number 18, they rearranged the equation, and they told me that A was negative 7 over 12. First of all, it can't be negative. Second of all, it can't be a fraction. My first step on number 18 
is I multiply everybody by 12. That was my first step. Okay, number 19 and 20. 19 and 20, it says, I'm supposed to find the x and y intercepts and graph the equation using the intercepts. I joked with you the other day, and this is the God honest truth. If Mia finds the x intercept by plugging in a y value of 0, if she finds the y intercept by plugging in an x value of 0, and she graphs those two intercepts and connects the dots, good for her. Otherwise, to be honest, all I look at is Mia's graph. So if Mia just puts her intercept in 8, and then just counts the slope up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, and just has a line that is hitting through the correct points, I'm not going to pay attention to really how Mia did it. I know that sounds counterintuitive because I'm telling you I'm a direction stickler. But when it comes to graphing, Seth has the graph correct. I don't really look at his work. I only look at his work when his graph's incorrect. I'm trying to figure out what on God's point earth he did. Um, the most heartbreaking thing I saw on 19 and 20 were people who had lines that looked straight up and down. I had two or three papers in here, and their lines were straight up and down. One, that's an incorrect graph. And two, that's not a function. So, okay, now that I've said all my words about the quiz, I will gladly give you your quiz back. I will have my key at my desk. You're more than welcome, and I do highly recommend you come look at it before you leave the room today. I would say I would post it on Google Classroom, but let's be honest, most people aren't that honest, and we're afraid my few who haven't had a chance to finish their quizzes will suddenly have an unfair advantage in mind. So let's not let that happen. But I am going to let you keep your quiz, even though I'm normally a hoarder, just because I want Seth to make sure he does not make some same mistakes on the test on Okay, let me pass these out. Are there any questions about the quiz now that you hear my thoughts on it? <laughs> <laughs> Um, it depended on the question. It depended on the question. The first four, you know, let, me give you, let me give everyone there so we can go through that. That's a really good question. You can have a point for that. Okay, so number one, number two, this only went in the 30% category, so don't let it break your heart. If you're wanting to, I had someone who went online over the weekend and came in this morning to see if they can do some short correct. That's great, and we can do that if you want to. But honestly, <laughs> get this test together in our belt. If you think you fixing the quiz would make you more prepared for the test, great. Otherwise, I'm really focused on the 60% grade coming up on Thursday. <laughs> Okay, if you didn't get it, that means you didn't finish or something went wrong in line. Yes, I'll get back to you. Okay, one day asked a really good question. So look at your quiz and let's go through the points. One through four or just one point each? Just one point each. Um, five, six, seven, and eight in the middle four. Like I said, if there were four different things, they were four points each. The bottom ones were two points each, and from here on out, everything was two points each. So back to, if you lost a lot of points, I bet you mess messed up the middle four, and I bet what Gracie did is she didn't list domain and range, even though it said in the direction, state the domain and the range of each relation. So everything's basically two points, except for the top vocab, it was only one, and then the middle, since she had so much to do on there, that did four points each. Yes, dear, you had a question. I did, and I know I realized that. So Seth has a good question. I said I was going to, for the quiz, I was going to accept X comma Y instead of the word relation. And I forgot all about that when I was grading those papers late at night. So if you're like Seth and you put that and you would like your point back, when I get done rambling with the notes today, come show me and we'll get you that point back. And if you have any other questions, like you took off two and I think I did it correctly, just let me know. Because again, I like you, so I'm getting a hurry when I'm grading and doing things. <coughs> Otherwise,
realize it's yours to keep. Yours to keep. If you're wanting to redo the quiz or something, come see me do our period. But again, I'm more focused on your tests on Thursday than I am on how you did on that quiz a couple days ago. Okay, I had a couple people finally finish their chapter one test. I need to give them theirs back as well. Okay, let's go ahead and get our notes out and go over this math workshop. I'm not going to check your homework yet because of how many people have asked me today. Hey, do we have homework over the weekend? So many have asked me that, and I'm going to wait to look at that for now. I'm going to wait for now. Okay, these math workshops are, I don't know, way different than the ones we've been doing. They're kind of leading up to what we're going to cover in the second half of Chapter 2. It's completely okay if you don't remember the answer to these. But, I mean, I told you in the directions you could Google it. It is one line. What does it cross through? What what point does it cross there? To get your point, what point does it cross there? Okay, for a free point that is available for your group, all parent graphs cross through a certain point. Does anyone know what that certain point is? Yes, Arturo. Yeah, they all cross through the origin. They all cross through zero zero. Yeah, you guessed a lot of things. So. I said one. You guessed a lot of things that was not the order. <laughs> yeah, he guessed a lot of things that weren't the order. Okay, so the line that goes through the origin, what's the slope of this line? You can see y equals x. What's the slope? What's the m? Zero. Yes. Okay, Seth, you can have your point now, even though Will said the wrong number. Okay, so it's really y equals 1x plus 0. So that's why I'm putting my intercept at 0. That's why I'm counting up 1 over 1. And this one will go through how to make it just because you need practice graphing. Do you actually have to put this many points on something? My gosh, no, I'm being ridiculous. When I check it, I check to see at least one other point that Mia graphed the slope correctly. And then I check her intercept. If Mia thinks I study it beyond that, she is wrong. Okay, did someone have time to Google y equals x squared? Wow. Or is it mine? No. We got to go, Will. It's mine. Okay, so. Oh, I did, Seth. I did. It came out all wrong. I'm telling you, when you're hot, you're hot, you're not, you're not. Okay, so y equals x squared is a parabola. A parabola. Does anyone know what letter of the alphabet a parabola looks like? Yes, ma'am. It is a U. So we're going to make a U. Now, we'll go specifically more through this later when we get to our next section of notes. But we're going to go through 1, 1 and negative 1, 1. We're going to go through 2, 4 and negative 2, 4. And if Alonde were to ask me why, I would remind him that negative 2 squared is positive 4, the same way that positive 2 squared is positive 4. <coughs> So we end up with, it's supposed to look like a U. Mine tends to look a little V-ish lately. I need to work on that. It's supposed to be like a U. <clears throat> okay, we referenced this one a few weeks ago. Actually, it was last week with our math workshop. There was one similar to this. Maybe you wrote it down and you have it in your math workshop. It's okay if you want to look for part C. We talked about this one last week, what its name was. Does anyone remember? We had it, it was in the examples of function, not, not a, function. a function. Huh? Not a function. It was a function, but we had a specific name for it. And I told you last week, last Tuesday or Wednesday. It is the square root function in your group. Can I have a point? Square root function. Okay, it's also going to go through that origin. Like we're saying, all parent functions go through the origin. Um, what's the square root of 1? What's the square root of 4? So I'm going to go over to 1, 1, and over to 4, 2. And then I'm really out of room on this specific coordinate grid, so I'm going to connect the dots and call it a day. We had one like this last week. I told you, anytime I see an arm, I tend to think square root. Sometimes I'm wrong, but most of the time I'm right. There's another one that looks similar. 
we'll have to deal with that monster second semester. So my points are ugly. I went through 1, 1, and 4, 2. I wanted to write that down because it does look ugly. <clears throat> there is at least one person in the room who had me for algebra last year, so I'm not really going to be... Ooh, you better be glad she saved your tail and knew what the next one was because I was staring at you. Okay. Uh, part D is an absolute value function, and Natalie's group can have the point. Uh oh, smart. No, you've already got some points today. I was talking to you, but it's okay. Natalie said it for you. I said there was one person I had for algebra last year in the room, and I know he should know this answer, and then Natalie spit it out for you how to do it, so good for her. Okay, what's the absolute value of negative one? Just positive one. Um, so I'm going to put a point at two. But the absolute value of negative 2, still positive 2. If I put a point at 3, absolute value of negative 3, still positive 3. So I end up making this V all the way out. My V is not so pretty. Again, Mr. Ferris is probably going to judge me for how ugly my graphs get. But you know me. Once I get that point at the origin and I got the right shape, I tend to not overanalyze things. Yay. It is 6th grade material. It's been a while though, Mr. Ferris. You gotta be a little forgiving. It's, it's our Monday. Okay, let's see. And then we get to this bad boy, and this is the hardest one of them all for today. Is it? Yeah. I'm zoomed in as far as I can go, baby. Addison, can you really not? Do you want to sit right here? Do you want to get my chair and sit right there? Okay, okay. I'll give you mine when I get it. Okay, let's see. And you know what? We're actually going to save part E for tomorrow because I would like for you to get a chance to Google this one. We'll save that one for tomorrow. Um, yes, dear? You want to you can go on, and I guess I've not told y'all this, so let me tell you all my secrets. My favorite website for math is called Wolf. 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 Then Ram. Wolf Ram. And then Alpha. It's the weirdest looking name ever. Wolf, like a wolf, then Ram, like a ram, and then Alpha. And if you go to it and you, and you tell it what you need, it'll do it. You know, we talked about before that I have my master's in math. It used to do my, my homework for me. If I asked it nicely, it can give you the answers to things. So now you know. We'll frame alpha. Okay. If Arturo was trying to get ahead, or actually, Arturo's group's fine. If Dontarius was trying to get his head and get his group some points for tomorrow in advance, if he was trying to get his point, group some points in advance, he would go ahead and get number two completely done along with part E. He would go ahead and have number two completely done. Now, in his defense, I did not hand this out last week like I have been doing, so he did not have time to get ahead. But next, tomorrow, he will be ahead. Okay, get out your notes if you had not already. It's our last day of me talking about new stuff. <clears throat> Table five, thank you for doing that so quietly. You can have a point. Okay, so I'm telling you I'm going to be nice. And even though I ought to check and see whether or not Gracie did these 12, since like 10 people have asked me, hey, did we have homework? I'm not going to look at these 12 at this exact moment. I ought to, but I'm not going to. Instead, I'm going to let Gracie show me. But she needs to have shown me before Thursday because our test is Thursday. And I tend to grade when you test, to be honest. So I'm probably going to type in that zero for Gracie on Thursday if she's not cleared it up by then. Okay, so if you didn't do your graph and homework, it's going to be okay for now. Have it done by Thursday at the latest. Okay, we only have a couple problems we're going to do today, and we're actually going to skip through some of those just so we can get done in a hurry. Um, we were graphing on Friday with slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. Most of us had that down, and most of us have had that down for years. Today, we're going to do um, slope-intercept, which is not really most people's thing. 
which is fine. If you had geometry last year, which most of us did, if you had geometry last year, your teacher went this through this with you, so you're going to kind of break her heart now if you don't remember some of it. Wink, wink for those who did have me. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm actually going to be so nice that I'm probably going to put this on the board on Thursday. But if Natalie doesn't know how to use it, seeing random things is not going to help her. Okay. I learned it as, well, Miss Brister, do you have a preference? Do you care if I do? Or do you prefer? Uh, then they're on where they, you know, where one wife's here and they've added the other wild already. Me too. Okay, just making sure. Okay, so my teacher taught me slope intercept form like this. Your teacher might have used a different form. It's okay if you know a different way to do it. Go with it. Table four, you're so quiet. Out of point. Now, this is the form I used. Now, again, there are other forms that, that would work and will get you the same answer. This is just how my teacher did it. And you know we're all creatures of habit, so this is how I do it. Okay. <clears throat> so, I'm given a slope, which we know is our M. I'm given an ordered pair, so I'm going to call the first thing X1, the second thing Y1. And I'm literally just going to plug it into my formula. So I have y2 minus y1 equals m x2 minus x1. But when I plug in, I'm going to have y2 minus negative 8 equals negative 5 x2 minus negative 3. We have to be careful. And, of course, we started off with one that had double negatives. We end up getting positive stuff. So, again, be careful with those signs. We end up with y2 plus 8 equals negative 5 x2 plus 3. Oh, oh, my God, me. All we did was negative times negative was positive. Negative times negative was positive. Now, this is going to be fine, but you and I both know we don't know how to graph it from here. That's not helpful. And to be honest, I start getting real lazy and I stop writing the twos. I just put y. So we like it in a certain form when we graph it. What form do we like it in? Okay, Natalie, you can have a point. So right now we've got y, but what's bothering the y? The 8. So we've got to get rid of that 8. But before we do that, let's go ahead and distribute that negative 5 and have negative 5x minus 15. Okay, I subtract that 8 from both sides, and my final answer would be what? And that's how your group got a point. Okay, so this would stink if we actually had to graph this because of where that intercept is at negative 23. Okay, so we were looking at our two learning targets. The first one said... We can write an equation given the slope and a point. So we had point and a slope. Point and slope. And I don't know why I wrote slope intercept. This is called point slope. Good grief, Miss Compton. This is point slope. You and I love slope intercept. That's why Natalie was referencing that y equals mx plus b. I'm telling you, my brain's been on break too. Okay, so again, we're looking for a problem that has a point and a slope. So what's the next problem that gives us a point and a slope? Look at your paper. What's the next one that gives us a point and a slope? We'll get it together for I take a point. Three. three. Number three. Okay, so let's go to number three. I heard it from a couple people. I don't know who to give credit to. <laughs> there went that one. No. If I would give it to everyone but y'all at the moment. I told you. You're on my nerves. Okay, so, you know, I'm a creature of habit. I tend to write the formula just because I like to reference it and simply just plug and chug. That's what my teacher would call it. So, again, I have my M. I have my X1. I have my Y1. I'm just going to plug junk in. So, when I plug in my stuff, Y2 minus Y1, well, Y1 is negative 8, equals M X2 minus X1. Well, X1 is 6. 
And then I get real lazy from there and I have to stop writing those twos. Can someone tell me what my next line should read? Y plus A. Oh, bless you. Equals what? Negative two. No. Yeah, go ahead and distribute. Yeah. Negative two. Oh, yeah. Negative two thirds eight. <laughs> and then what? I don't know why. will you save her so she can get the point? Oh, I heard it. I heard it. Who said it? Brister, did you tell him? Brister! Okay, negative two thirds times negative six, you end up getting positive four. Again, bless your heart. It's okay, Ms. Brister. It's a, bless your heart. Will hates fractions. It's a known fact. That's fine. I've already been through. I know I'm picking. You've got take take one away, Addison. They're on my nerves. It's not you. Uh, if you are having trouble with fractions, again, we went over how to put those in the calculator so nicely, so it could do the work for you. Okay, and my final answer for your group to get a point would be final answer. Y equals mx plus b. Yes, Eduardo. So he subtracted 8 from both sides. 4 minus 8 is a negative 4. Perfect. Okay. So again, point, slope, we were given a point. We were given a slope. We plugged it in. We chugged out an answer. Okay. We are going to do number 2 and number 4. They deal with that second learning target of if we're given enough two points, can we still use this formula and end up figuring everything out? And we can. So let's go back to number two. We're not going to skip it today. So x1, y1, x2, y2. If I go ahead and label my points, it makes life so much easier. So when I write down my formula, I know what to plug in for X1. I know what to plug in for Y2. I know everything except what? Yes, who said that? Did you say it, Kelsey? Yes, I thought it was Abby, but I don't know. Okay, she's not claiming it, so it's my point to you. Y2 is 1 minus Y1, well, that's 3, equals M. That's the thing I don't know this time. X2 is 0 minus X1 is negative 2. And I'm really making life too complicated, aren't I? Made the two positives. Yes, it is going to be. It's going to be negative two equals m plus two m, and then there's a positive two, so it's. I don't know. What? No solution. <laughs> no, baby doll. It ends up being negative two equals two m. So we end up getting m equals negative 1. I'm still waiting for someone to tell me the obvious. Do we have to do that? Oh, we have to do math. Did we have to do that? No. What do we normally do when we're given two points? We do not just write no solutions. Not this math. What do we normally do? What do we normally do when we're given two points and we need to figure out the slope? What do you normally use to figure out the slope? Well, you did a little fraction thing. And what, what, tell me the formula. Y2 <laughs> and you can have your point back, although I need you to get it together. Okay, so you and I normally don't do this mess. I'm only doing it today because the directions have kind of implied that we're supposed to be doing this. Let's be honest, back to, I really like to just see if Mia has the right answer. If Mia uses this formula and she plugs in her numbers, y2 is 1 minus 3 over 0 minus negative 2. She ends up with negative 2 over positive 2, which is negative 1. Mia ends up with the exact same slope as I did. And Mia's doesn't look as confusing because we're more used to it. <coughs> So now that we have a point, we can pick either one. Well, let's pick the easy one. We have a point. We have a slope. 
we can try that hard formula one more time. And so, and I'm not even going to write it all out this time because I'm out of room. So we're going to plug this in for x1, this one for y1. So it's going to be y minus 1 equals negative 1 x minus 0. Yes, it is the y2. I was just leaving it off because I was being lazy. But thank you for making me not lazy. Can I be lazy from here on? No. Yes. Okay. So y2, ooh, I said can I be lazy and then I was going to write it anyway. y minus 1 equals... Um, it just ends up being negative x. So when we add 1, we end up with y equals negative x plus 1. It was x minus 0, which is just x. Negative 1 times x, we get negative x. You're okay with the negative x. How did you get negative x? Well, I just stopped writing that too. x minus 0 was just x. x times negative 1 was negative x. And I end up with negative x plus 1. Okay, so again, we tried to overcomplicate our life over here in pink, but in all honesty, what you and I would normally do, get the slope, then plug in this point slope. But can you make life complicated and get the slope from point slope? Yeah, you can. Okay, are there any questions about number two? Let's do number four, and then I'm going to make your day. Ish, ish, not completely. Okay, so on number four, I'm needing help calculating that slope. I'm going to freeze the screen, let me know you got the answer for slope. Uh, goofy ones, y'all are normally one of the best groups ever. If y'all are that goofy again when somebody's in here, I am going to kill you with my eyes. You understand me? I just want to let you know. I know, you've been going out this whole time. It's going to be a bad day. Okay. Waiting for the slope. On the, you're, you're good, Dr. Harris. You got the slope? He's just observing me. Yeah. He came in like a ghost, and then he evaporated. Okay. Anyone have the slope? So we can stop with this? Yes, please, Hunter. Please, in my misery. Yes. Y2 minus Y1. So negative 3 minus 7 over 3 minus negative 2, we end up with negative 2. So if we've got our slope, we can pick either point. To be honest, I go with whichever one's smaller. So like on the last one, I picked 0, 1 because those were some tiny numbers. So on this one, 3, negative 3 to me is smaller, so I'm going to pick that one. So when I do y2 minus y1 equals m x2 minus x1, I'm going to pick y2 minus negative 3 equals m, I know that, that's negative 2, Ms. Compton, x2 minus 3. So again, I had my slope, I plugged it in, I had a positive 3, I plugged it in for the x, I had a negative 3, I plugged it in for y. And now I can do the math from here. Are there anyone who's concerned about how I plugged it in? Again, I will write this formula on the board, but if Dr. Harris doesn't know what to do with it, it just looks like some gibberish. So I have y plus 3, I'm going to drop right in the twos, equals negative 2x minus 3. And now I'll give you a second. I would love to know the final answer in slope intercept form. Yes, it is. Yes, I am. The final minor answer. Final. Final answer. Move the three over and you're there. So y equals negative six. No, 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 no. Y equals negative 2x plus, plus 9. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> my How is that it? I, I, I think that's my mistake. Someone stop breaking my heart. Someone you just say it. Y equals negative 2x plus 9. 
It's no, my gosh. I'm gonna cry. Yes, please, Rexy, please. If it, if you can have a point. Okay. Everybody has been applying. It's okay. It happens to the best of us. You distributed the negative 2. That was great. You had negative 2x plus 6. When you subtract 3 from both sides, 6 minus 3 is just 3. So it should be negative 2x plus 3. Negative 2x plus 3. Okay. Somehow time has almost ran away from me. This is fine. It is fine. So let's go over and I want to tell you the blank and let's talk about what to do with it even though you're not going to have time to do it. So what kind of lines have the same slope? What kind of lines have the same slope? Parallel lines have the same slope. My gosh, today. And then perpendicular lines. Have slopes that are negative reciprocal. It's at the bottom. So if I have an example of a line and its slope is 3 and we're parallel, then my slope is still going to be 3. But if we're perpendicular, if my slope is 3, my perpendicular friend is negative 1 third. Okay, you had a good geometry teacher. She taught you this last year. I know the 10 or so that I had in here learning this last year. So the ones on the back, I'm going to post the key to, but let's be honest, they should already know how to do. Okay, I want you to focus on your study guide, so I'm going to make this optional, although I do think opting to do it is a good idea. So let's be honest, Cal has homework that he forgot to do over the weekend. He opts to get a head start on this study guide tonight. But then if Cal just wants to make sure he's good to go with graphing especially, I do have one more checkpoint, but I'm going to make it optional. In fact, we'll just add three points to your text. Three. Three. Five. Five points to your test. Five, five points to your test. What? Five to your test if you do this extra one. You don't have to if you don't want to. We'll say it's due. Well, you got to have it done before the test. So before the test.